a masterpiece painting was lost until a keen observer saw it on screen in a movie. The internet says it's true. <laughs> Welcome to The Internet Says It's True, where every week we learn something that sounds made up but is really true, part of the WCBE podcast experience. My name is Michael Kent. This is episode 198. Brand new story this week for you, so thanks for tuning in. I'm currently on vacation with Awful Internet, so... There's no Yap Yap session this week, but we will play the quiz game with you, so stay tuned for that. Also, recording this whole thing on my iPhone as an experiment. Let me know what you think of the audio quality. Obviously, this isn't the normal setup, but I would like to know if I can get away with recording while on the road using nothing but my phone. It would be pretty convenient if I could do that without my mobile recording setup. So I would love your feedback on that. If you love the show and you want to show your support, please do that by joining Patreon and becoming a Tizzitor. You can do that at patreon.com slash Michael Kent. And when you do, I will personally mail you out some stickers and other goodies. Go check that out. That's patreon.com slash Michael Kent. I am once again asking for your financial support. We will get right into this week's story about a piece of missing art. So let's get on with it. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. There's something about missing pieces of art that just capture the imagination. Art theft might be one of the more romantic types of heists out there, besides maybe robbing a bank, and it's been the subject of countless books and movies. The idea of stealing something that is on public display is daring and has this impact on people that other types of thievery don't. Our story today isn't necessarily about stolen art, but art that has gone missing. People love stories about lost treasures. In 1990, two police officers entered the Isabella Stewart Gardner Art Museum in Boston. They told the museum security they were responding to a disturbance call. The men weren't police at all, but art thieves who bound and gagged the security guards and proceeded to steal 13 pieces of art worth a total of at least $500 million. One of them was Rembrandt's Storm on the Sea of Galilee, the artist's only seascape. To this date, all of the works remain missing, including the famous Rembrandt piece. One of Vincent Van Gogh's paintings is also currently missing. It's called Poppy Flowers, and it's actually been stolen twice from the same museum. The first time it was stolen from the Mohammed Khalil Museum in Cairo, it was during a move between two wings of the museum. It was eventually recovered, but stolen again in 2012. The piece and the thieves still remain at large. But one painting that went missing wasn't stolen. Robert Barony painted Sleeping Lady with Black Vase in 1927 and 1928. It depicts the painter's wife, Etta, in a blue dress, sleeping. Barony was Hungarian, but living in Berlin, and after World War I, had fled back to Budapest, where he painted the piece. It was unveiled in the Ernst Museum in Hungary, and was sold to a private buyer the same year, in 1928. That was when the painting was lost. It's believed that the buyer was Jewish and had fled Europe as a result of the events of World War II. That's how the painting ended up going missing for the next 90 years. The painting in the meantime was missed in the Hungarian art world. And although the artist's works weren't valued like a missing Van Gogh or Rembrandt, it was referred to as Robert Barony's missing masterpiece. Historians only had a black and white photograph of the piece of art and no leads as to what happened to the piece after the war. It's considered the most widely known piece of Hungarian art in history. But that's probably due to the story of its unlikely rediscovery after being considered lost for so long. After a short break, I'll tell you all about where the painting was finally found. There was a time that humans used 100% organic products as healing balms and moisturizers for their skin. Well, I've partnered with an awesome company that wants to get back to those times. Fatco sells organic and responsibly made tallow-based skincare products. For centuries, humans used tallow in skin moisturizers and healing bombs, but unfortunately, the topical application of these fats seemed to stop around the same time that animal fats stopped being considered part of a healthy diet. A lot of modern skincare products do more harm than good by stripping your skin of its natural oils. Let's change that. You can try them out now at fatco.com and get 15% off your order by using my promo code INTERNET. Go to theinternetsaysitstrue.com slash deals for the link. 
I'm John DeSando, host of Back Talk. This podcast is an extension of the long running, award winning movie review show, It's Movie Time. Back Talk features additional content and banter with guests about new movies. If you want more insight and information about what's playing now in theaters and online, find Back Talk at the WCBE Podcast Experience on WCBE.org. You'll be happy you did. We're living through the most dynamic time in human history, and what we do as leaders matter. We are the ones that create the leverage to shift directions of our companies, our nonprofits, and our communities. As a leader or an emerging leader, please join me for a dynamic conversation with top thought leaders, academics, and executives to learn more about how to elevate your leadership. I'm Maureen Metcalf. Join us at the WCBE podcast experience at wcbe.org. RG. If you love listening to this podcast every week and you want to show your support, that would mean a great deal to me. You can do that by becoming a Patreon member. We've got members at all levels, whether you want to pledge $1 a month or $10 a month. Just think about the value that you receive from this show. And if you like the histories and the stories that you learn about or the jokes that you hear, and if you think that they're worth it, consider signing up. For that, you get every episode ad-free and a week early, access to bonuses like the unedited videos of the guest appearances, and 20% off all merchandise. You can sign up today at patreon.com slash Michael Kent. That's patreon.com slash Michael Kent. In December of 2009, Gergely Barki, an expert on Hungarian art, was watching a film with his three-year-old daughter. They were watching Stuart Little, a 1999 Rob Minkoff film starring Michael J. Fox, Hugh Laurie, and Gina Davis. Barki worked as an art researcher in Hungary's National Gallery in Budapest. In the film, Mr. and Mrs. Little, played by Hugh Laurie and Gina Davis, are seen in their home with their son, played by Jonathan Lipnicki and Stuart Little, a computer animated mouse voiced by Michael J. Fox. And in their home, on a wall, plain as day, Barky noticed the painting. After all these years, he was convinced he was looking at a color version of Sleeping Lady with Black Vase, Barony's lost masterpiece. The painting was in a prominent part of the house in the film, so it appeared a lot. Barky didn't have any method of recording the movie as he was watching it on television, so he kept watching, waiting for the next time it appeared on screen. By the end of the film, he was positive that this was the real thing. There'd be no way for anyone to have duplicated this painting, because at the time it wasn't well known outside of Hungary, and the only known image of the painting was in black and white. Barky decided he was now on a mission to track it down. Suddenly. I became very excited and my daughter didn't understand why I'm so excited. That was it. That was the first, the first scene when I realized that there is a, a Bering painting behind Hugh Laurie. I took it like a miracle of Christmas for me. It was a gift uh, for a Hungarian art historian. And after Christmas, I, I started to make contact with the filmmakers. He immediately started researching production companies in the U.S. and getting the names of crew members and set designers at Sony Pictures and Columbia. He had sent about 50 different emails when he finally discovered the set designer assistant who had the painting. And that's when we learned a little bit more about how it ended up in a Hollywood movie. So the Hungarian art world knew that the painting had been sold to an unknown person in the lead up to World War II. And the best guess is that it was a Jewish person fleeing Europe that had bought the painting and fled to America. That's how the painting ended up in the United States and was finally rediscovered. And we only know the next part because the set designer's assistant, whose name has never been reported, was able to provide a backstory. At an art auction in San Diego in the mid-90s, the St. Vincent de Paul auction house had sold the painting to Michael Hemstead, an art collector, who made some money on the piece when he realized it was a barony, and he sold it for $400. He had bought it for $40. A while after that, it ended up in an antique store on Fair Oaks Avenue in Pasadena. That's where the set designer purchased the painting for $500. It had been used for years by the set designer, and in more than Stuart Little. Apparently there are numerous soap opera episodes, like the show Family Law, in which the painting shows up in the background. By the time the art historian Barkey discovered the piece in Stuart Little, it was 10 years after the making of the film, and the piece was then hanging in the home of this set designer's assistant, who had bought it from the studio after Stuart Little wrapped. Barkey flew to Los Angeles and met the assistant to confirm the authenticity of the piece. He rushed across the street to a hot dog vendor to borrow a screwdriver and started taking the frame apart. 
His suspicion was confirmed. The painting was indeed the long-lost Sleeping Lady with Black Vase. Now, this was all happening as prices of authentic baronies were skyrocketing. The owner of the painting sold it to an art collector from Budapest for $137,000. It was sold again in 2014 to a private art collector for $285,700. The painting is considered the perfect embodiment of 1920s European art, and for decades, it was lost to the world. It's a crazy cinematic story with a turn that even M. Night Shyamalan couldn't have written. Which is why I was shocked when I looked up the writers of the film Stuart Little. The original book was written by E.B. White, but the screenplay was written by Greg Brooker, and you won't believe this, M. Night Shyamalan. The internet says it's true. So as I said earlier in the episode, no yap yap today. Probably next week too, because the Wi-Fi signal here isn't the best. But let's play a quiz game. And when I return home, I'll mail out prizes if you get them right. And we got to use the honor system here, so no Googling. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and honor this, uh, this prize segment for, let's say, three weeks. So three weeks from the release date of this episode. If you get the questions right, feel free to shoot me a message, however you can, on social media, whatever you'd like, and I will send you out a prize. For the first question, we're going to play for a balloon. It's a balloon I use in my show. It says, I'm sorry I called you a dick. Uh, I use these, you know, in every show, except for, you know, for clean shows, I have them that say, I'm sorry I called you a jerk. So if you want that balloon instead, let me know. And if you answer correctly, you know, and you can do that on my Facebook, on Twitter. Yes, I still have an X, whatever it's called. Um, you know, or just do it through the website. I'll mail you a balloon. Sleeping Lady with Vase is an Art Deco style painting. Which one of these artists is referred to as the father of Art Deco? Is it A, René Lalique, B, Henri Matisse, or C, Max Ernst? Again, which one is the father of Art Deco? Is it A, René Lalique, B, Henri Matisse, or C, Max Ernst? We'll give you five... Four, three, two, one. The answer is A. If you said A, you got it right. Henri Matisse was a modernist. Max Ernst was a surrealist. But René Lalique is referred to as the father of Art Deco. Question two. For this question, we're going to play for a not beer drink koozie. Again, something from the show. It's a blue drink koozie. It says not beer on it. It is great for, you know, you throw, throw Coca-Cola in there and drive in traffic with it. It's pretty good. Which one of these paintings is the most famous one hanging in the Museum of Fine Arts in Budapest? Okay, so this is the Budapest Hungary Art Museum. Which one of these is the most famous painting there? Is it A, The Virgin of the Rocks by Leonardo da Vinci? B, The Coronation of Napoleon by Jacques-Louis David? Or C, Esterhazy Madonna by Raphael? So it was Virgin of the Rocks by Leonardo da Vinci, The Coronation of Napoleon by Jacques-Louis David, or C, uh, was Esterhazy Madonna by Raphael. Five, four, three, two. The answer is Esterhazy Madonna by Raphael. It is a, uh, you know, it's a painting of Madonna. The other two paintings hang in the Louvre in Paris. All right, so if you got that right, let me know. I'll send you a drink koozie. Question three, we're going to play for a sticker. It's a three-by-three three sticker of the show, and if you want more than one, you can have them because I'm no longer buying from Sticker Mule. I'm going to order all of them from Sticker Ninja in the future. We talked about art direction and assistant to the set dresser in this episode. A gaffer is usually the title given to the chief electrician who is in charge of lighting scenes. Which one of these titles is used in the film industry for the gaffer's assistant, the second in command to the gaffer? Is it A, key grip, B, best boy electric, or C, gaffer's mate? So once again, those options, this is for the gaffer's assistant. A, key grip, B, best boy electric, or C, gaffer's mate. Five, four, three, two. The answer, best boy electric. It's the weirdest title in the film industry. Best boy electric, that is the second in command to the, to the gaffer. Question four. For this question, we're going to play for a random playing card from my collection. So I'll mail you a playing card. I can throw a little autograph on there for you, or I can just mail you the card. I don't know why you'd want a random, like, seven of spades, but hey, whatever. Uh, which one of these facts is true of the 1999 film Stuart Little? A, 
it was the first film to hit the number one box office spot in the new millennium, B, it was the most expensive film produced in 1999, or C, it's the shortest film to have been released in all of the 1990s. So once again, those options were A, it was the first one to uh, hit number one in the new millennium, B, most expensive film in 1999, or C, shortest one to have been released in all the 90s. Five, four, three, two, the answer is A, it was the first film to hit the number one box office spot in the new millennium. It hit number one in the charts. It knocked off Toy Story 2. That was the the movie it beat for that number one spot. All right, last question, folks. Last question, and if you get this one right, I'm going to send you a rubber chicken keychain. I sell these for $5 at my shows, but you can have it for free if you can tell me the right answer without Googling it. Hugh Laurie starred in Stuart Little in 1999. In 1998... He made an appearance in a television sitcom. Which one of these was it? A. Friends, B. King of Queens, or C. Will and Grace? Again, those options were Friends, King of Queens, or Will and Grace. Five, four, three, two. It was Friends in season four, episode 24. This is part two of the one with Ross's wedding. He played the gentleman on the phone. So just a bit part in the background. Uh, that is, uh, that's Hugh Laurie there. So if you got that right, I'll send you a keychain. Just let me know. And that, my friends, is all for this week. Thank you so much for listening. Here's the voice of Stuart Medium. Thank you for listening to The Internet Says It's True. To listen to episodes ad-free and a week early, support us on Patreon. You can do that at patreon.com forward slash Michael Kent. If you learned something just now that you didn't already know, go to the Apple Podcast app and leave us a review with five stars and a few words. That helps us a ton, because that's how the algorithm works. I don't know what an algorithm is, but just do it! See you next week for a brand new episode of The Internet Says It's True! The Internet Says It's True would like to thank the Patreon subscribers whose monthly contributions help to make this show possible. Sean Brown, Joshua Endress, Dallas Ray, Bryce Swanson, Eugene Anderson, Jim and Joanne Martin, Mitch and Andrew Joseph Kemplin, and the show's official emperor, Kick Track. The show is written and produced by me, Michael Kent. The theme song is by Finite Music Forge, and all audio clips in this episode are used for education and commentary and used under Fair Use Title 17 USC Section 107. You can listen to past episodes by searching for The Internet Says It's True wherever you get your podcasts, and you can see bonus content at patreon.com slash Kent.